Do you remember when Rush Limbaugh said something to the effect of after Obama got elected, I hope he fails, and people went absolutely bat bleep? And all he was saying is that I assume the policies that Obama is enacting, tax spend and regulating, are going to fail, and I'm rooting for their failure. That's all he said. He didn't say he wants Americans to suffer the way Bill Maher did. I'm rooting for a recession. I'm sorry if that hurts people. You know, there might be a silver lining here. ...about the fact that it took a, um, you know, colorblind, genderblind, um, state, you know, state line blind virus to sort of have all of the president's sins from his first three years catch up with him. You can't stand there and lie. You can't contradict your scientists because they're the ones that stand at 66 and 68 percent public trust, not you. He's down at 38 percent. Pence is lower than him. I mean, he needs those people, whether he likes what they say or not. And I, I wonder what you think about whether or not there's some silver lining there, that some of the things that, that, that we've been talking about for three years may be finally catching up with him. Where do, you start, where do you start with this? He needs these people whether he wants them or not? So he's at war with his medical team? Never mind, Dr. Burks comes out and says, you know, here's what Donald Trump meant when he talked about the disinfectant. Never mind, Dr. Fauci says, had Donald Trump not enacted the travel restrictions on China, we would have had far more cases, far more deaths. Never mind, he is at war, says MSNB Hee with his medical staff. Notice the glee. Cheering. I intensely disliked the policies of Barack Obama. Never had anything against him personally. Intensely disliked his policies. Intensely disliked the fact that he campaigned by calling the Iraq War a dumb war. Intensely disliked the, in, the um, implementation of Obamacare. Intensely disliked raising taxes. Intensely disliked all the regulations he imposed. Did not like the Paris Accord. Did not like the Iran deal. Did not like the Berg Dog deal. N- did not like the way he handled the Hillary email scandal. I could go on and on and on. But it never occurred to me to root for harm to the American people because I disliked Obama. In fact, I said that one of the benefits of this guy is going to be that he's going to try every cockamamie tax, spend, regulate plan that you can think of. They will not work. And then maybe then the American people will realize, you know, if you leave the maximum money in the pockets of the American people, They can invest, they can donate, they can save, they can buy in a far more productive and efficient way than can bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. And here we've had eight years of this guy named Barack Obama. He promised all these things about our health care system. He promised that the cost curve would bend down, his term, not mine. He promised every family would get $2,500 a year in premium savings. He promised that your premiums and co-pays would not go, go up. He promised that if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. He told us that his mom lay dying in a hospital bed and had to fight with her insurance carriers over her health care ben- bills. Turned out not to be true. I still did not root for failure for the American people. I told you that the $787 billion stimulus plan was not, was not going to stimulate, and it didn't. Biden root for harm. These people are actively rooting for harm, and the facts do not matter. Never mind that there was a Rob Silverman commission, as I told you about many times, to look into whether or not the intel was manufactured or lied leading up to the Iraq war. And the commission came back and said, well, the intel was wrong. We assumed there were going to be stockpiles of WMD. There were no stockpiles, but nobody lied. There was no intent to deceive. It doesn't matter. Your average Democrat still believes George W. Bush lied us into the Iraq war because they choose to believe that George W. Bush lied us into the Iraq war, just as they choose to believe that Donald Trump referred the coronavirus as a hoax, just as they choose to believe that Donald Trump mocked a handicapped person, just as they choose to believe that Donald Trump in Charlottesville said there were good Nazis and bad Nazis and good fascists and bad fascists, even though he said, I'm not talking about the white nationalists and the neo-Nazis, quote, because they should be condemned totally. It doesn't matter. They choose to believe it. So it's not a stretch 
for Adam Schiff to choose to believe that Donald Trump has blood on his hands, that Donald Trump is directly responsible for the death of 50,000 Americans, 50,000 plus Americans, even though all he did was follow the advice that was given him by the top medical experts. It doesn't matter. Trial, and uh, it was uh, before that snippet that you showed, where we knew we had to answer the question to the senators, okay, essentially, House managers, you proved him guilty. Does he really need to be removed? After all, we have an election in nine months. How much damage could he really do? And we, we posed that question to the Senate, and we answered it by saying that he could do an awful lot of damage. But frankly, Chris, I don't think we had any idea how much damage he would go on to do in the months ahead. There are 50,000 Americans now who are dead uh, in significant part because of his incompetence. Right there. There are over 50,000 Americans dead because of his incompetence. Right there. In part because of his incompetence, because of his inability to think beyond himself. And put now, I'm really interested in hearing from a, some of my Democrat listeners and independent listeners. And the rest of you, of course, please call 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243. Chuck Todd asked Joe Biden whether or not Donald Trump had blood on his hands. Even Biden thought it was too harsh. Now Adam Schiff says, we can we impeached him. Your failure to remove him from office is directly responsible, in part, for the death of over 50,000 Americans, says Adam Schiff. Is that even a bridge too far for you, 